And now, Roma Wines, R-O-M-A, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. Roma Wines presents... Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills, is presented for your enjoyment by Roma Wines. That's R-O-M-A, Roma Wines. Those excellent California wines that can add so much pleasantness to the way you live, to your happiness, to entertaining guests, to your enjoyment of everyday meals. Yes, right now, a glass full of would be very pleasant, as Roma Wines brings you Heather Kovach and James Kovach in a remarkable tale of... Suspense. came into the drive in that rainy night. It was late. I was tired. I'd been on my feet all the way, carrying heavy trays, hopping to it with impatient people glaring their headlights on and off in my eyes. Heaven knows there are a lot of impatient people in Hollywood. We car hops don't have an easy time of it. Talk about your mail carriers. Well, we are the same. Raining or blowing or boiling hot, we've got to get through with that tray or know the reason why. Tired, hungry people who sit back in their car and expect a million dollars worth of service for a 10 cent tip. Why do we do it? Sure, there are other ways of making a living in Hollywood, but not many that hold a glittering promise that maybe someday, somehow, maybe someone will say, why, that girl looks like Lana Turner. Yes, at least her hair's done that way. Well, I think I could use her. Renee, the musical version of the Forsyth Saga. Oh, she'd be great in color. I think I'll ask her to come out to the studio. Yes, I know. It doesn't happen often. There's always the chance, and there's always that hope. That's what keeps us going, I guess. But there are other things that can happen in a drive-in that aren't on the menu. Like that stormy night I was telling you about when I let Ruth talk me into serving that last car that came in. Millie, 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 Millie listen. Please take his order, will ya? I got three cars and I am so oh, back. look at the clock, will ya? It's nearly midnight, I'm off duty. Oh, please, Millie, just this once more, would ya? My date's waiting. I'll do the same for you someday. Oh, but Ruth! I say, what's the matter with him? Can't he read? Please do not honk your horn. It looks square enough to me. It's a doctor's card. You see, he's probably in a rush. Anyway, you got nobody waiting for you. Oh, all right. Oh, gee, thanks, Mill. It was true. I, I had no one waiting for me. Only the bus that was going to take me to Glendale, where I lived alone in an apartment. So I buttoned up my raincoat and took a menu over to the car. Good evening. Uh, never mind the menu. Uh, just some black coffee, a pot of it, and a ham sandwich. Please, Harriet. When I took his order over to the car, the window was rolled up a little too far and it interfered with the tray. So I reached in to wind it down. When I touched the handle, it felt wet and kind of sticky too, but I didn't think anything about it. I got the tray from reset and then I looked at my hand. It was, it was as red as blood. I looked up quickly at him. Oh, oh, I, I'm sorry. I'm Dr. Morgan. I, I just had an emergency in the car. Oh, an accident? Yes, uh, sunset and vine. Why a crash? I just happened by and took one of them to the hospital. Oh, gee, that's a shame. Yes, it's too bad. Trying to wipe the blood from my hand with a 
the napkin. It gave me a creepy feeling to have somebody's blood on my hand. I didn't watch. I was trying to keep close track of the timing. I was a little worried for fear the drive-in clock wasn't right. Sometimes ran slow. So I took a coin from my apron pocket. I figured it was worth a nickel not to miss that last bus to Glendale. I walked over to the payphone, and I was about to drop the nickel in when... I looked out, and he was leaning on the horn and beckoning to me at the same time. I put the nickel back in my pocket and hurried off to him. I'm sorry, but I'm in a hurry. I haven't time for this coffee to cool off. I'll take the sandwich with me. How much do I owe you? Well, uh, that'll be 42 cents. Oh, there you are. Thank you. I hope I didn't interrupt your phone call. It wasn't important, was it? No, I was just checking on the time. I don't want to miss my bus. Well, there was a clock right over your head. Well, that's usually wrong. Well, I have the time. It's about four minutes to twelve. Oh, I'm going to miss my bus. Well, what time does it leave? At midnight, from Hollywood in La Brea. Oh, well, hop in. I'll take you. I'm going right past there. Oh, would you? I'll take the train. I'll be right back. I might still be able to make it. Okay. If I hurried to unhook the tray from the window, I gave it a jerk and it fell crashing to the ground. Oh, dear. Ruth! Yeah? Look, look, help me with these things, will ya? I'm gonna miss my boss. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, Mill. I'll get it, I'll get it. up quickly. Ruth went off with the tray. I had to run around the other side of the car when I noticed something shiny on the ground. It was one of the shakers that had fallen from the tray. I picked it up and started toward the driveway. Uh, well, why don't you just put that in your pocket? You can return it tomorrow? Come on, you're going to miss your bus. I put the shaker in my apron pocket and I rushed over to the other side of the car. He opened the door for me and I was just about to get in when I hesitated. I wasn't used to doing this kind of thing. And other girls sometimes let their customers drive them home. But I never did. Still, he looked so decent, and I... Come on! You'll miss it. Then, he reached out, as if to help me in, and I thought that he was really concerned about my missing the bus, because he seemed to pull me into the car. The first thing I knew, I was sitting beside him. And the door slammed. off. I was a little uneasy, but well, now I, I thought it's only a few blocks. I won't be in the car long. I suppose you're in a hurry because someone's waiting for you? No, I, I live alone. But I hate to walk back to Glendale in this rain. You won't have to walk. Well, this is very nice of you. I appreciate it. Not at all. Uh, would you mind rolling up that window on your side? Uh, there's a draft. Oh, of course. Uh, you can, uh, you can let me off at that corner over there. All right. Well, anywhere along here will be all right. This is fine. Right over there, by the stop sign. Am I? Yes, but I'll I'll get off over there by the other one. You're turning the wrong way. Am I? Yes, this this goes up to Laurel Canyon. Does it? You thought you were pretty smart, didn't you? I don't know what you mean. Please, let me out of this car. You went right to the phone. You thought I wouldn't see you. The phone? But I was calling about the time. Honest, I was. The time? With that clock over your head? Oh, but that clock's wrong sometimes. Besides, who would I call? Why should I call anyone about you? You were calling the police. No, honest, I wasn't. Let me out of this car. You were going to catch a bus. You were going to go straight to the police. That's where you were going. Uh, but Why? Why should I go to the police? You know why. No, really, I don't. 
because you saw it. You saw his blood. No, you don't. <laughs> there. Won't need to try and open that door again. Now we'll be getting along. After I made that last try to get out, he broke the handle off the door. All the strength seemed to go out of my body. I just sat there as we drove on. He passed a few people in some cars in the next blocks, and I thought of calling out, but then I knew why he'd asked me to roll up the window when I'd first gotten into the car. Then we were at the mouth of the canyon, and I could see the road, dark and lonely, up ahead. The car twisted and swerved. My arm ached from his strong fingers that had dug into it when I tried to jump out. I looked at him from the corner of my eye. He hadn't seemed like a criminal back at the drive-in. And he didn't seem like one now. His jaw was rough and needed a shave. Though his face, well... Oh, it wasn't like a criminal's at all. It, it was so tired. Quit staring at me. Oh, look, I, I didn't know anything about you. Honest, I didn't. Please, let me go. You know something about me now. Well, I won't tell anybody, whatever it is. I promise I won't. Oh, let me out. Please, let me out right here. It's a long way back to Glendale. Well, that's all the better. It'll take me hours to get back, and you'll be miles away by then. I'm not taking any chances with you, kid. Oh, please. Let me out. I, I've just got to get back. You said no <laughs> one's waiting for you. You live alone, don't you? No one will miss you. <laughs> oh, we both heard the siren then. He looked quickly in the rear vision mirror. Then he took a gun from his pocket. He turned to me. If that's for us, and we're stopped, just remember this. I've used this gun before. Tonight. And I can use it again if I have to. No! If I'm taken, you'll go first. Now listen. I'm a doctor, and you're a nurse. We're headed for an emergency. Now, go on now, and don't try to pull anything. Hey, going awful fast for a wet night, aren't you? Followed you up from Hollywood. Uh, uh, I'm Dr. Morgan, officer. This is Nurse Johnson. Emergency yeah. call. Yeah, okay, well, uh, let's see some identification. He fumbled through his pockets with one hand, holding the gun in my ribs with the other. The motorcycle cop looked over at me. I thought for a moment I could signal him with my eyes. That's when I knew he wasn't looking at my face. He was looking down at my white starched blouse, which he could see under my raincoat. He thought it was a nurse's uniform. Ah, here you are. Ah, okay. All right, Doc. Uh, sorry I stopped you. Hey, hey, wait just a minute. Just a minute. What's the matter? Uh, I just wanted to tell you, that rain started a little bit of a slide up ahead. Uh, just take it easy, okay? Thanks. I will. Oh. You're not Dr. Morgan, are you? What do you think? wasn't a big one, but it, it had made a terrible mess of the Things looked down, and the car swerved crazily. Oh, oh, it slipped from one side of the highway to the other. 
another. Suddenly, I froze. Oh, the whole rear end had slipped out. Oh, I looked over at him. He was tense. His look was so wild as he clutched the wheel and he shoved the car into reverse. Oh, I hoped it'd never move. It couldn't. We were stuck, hopelessly stuck. Oh, of all the luck. Suddenly, the car was filled with light. The car had come around the curve behind us. This might be my chance. Don't try anything. Uh, say, we're stuck here. Could you give us a push? Uh, have some California hospitality, will you? I'll have to get out. I'll have to put something under the wheel. You stay here. of the hill and hide, and then in the morning make my way back down the canyon. I carefully turned the handle of the door. I could see him in the mirror. He was at the back of the car. I eased the door gently open, put one foot out. I was just sliding out when I heard him. You're not going any place. Come here. Give me that raincoat. Why? I need something to to stuff under the wheel. But I... I you I, won't I, be needing it. Come on. He practically ripped it off my back. He wound it into a ball and bending down, he stuffed it under the wheel. The gun! It stuck out of his back pocket. If I could get it. If I could lay my hands on it. I held my breath. And reached out. He came so far, but I finally touched it, and then I snatched it from his pocket swiftly. Oh, uh, hey! G give me that gun! I'm going! You can't stop me now. Can't I? No! You... you stay right where you are! I won't hurt you. All I want to do is get home. I'm going. But if you follow me out... <laughs> you what? I'll kill you! I don't think you will. Yes, I will. I think I'm afraid. Aren't you? No. I... I don't care what happens to you. You're a murderer! You killed somebody! Uh, I thought you... didn't know anything about me. I didn't! But I do now, and I'm gonna tell the police. You stay where you are. No! No, don't! I'm not afraid! I'll shoot! <laughs> Too bad I used all those up, all of those tonight. You could have filled me full of holes. <laughs> now give me that gun and get in the car. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. There. What do you think? <gasps> I'm nearing the top of the canyon now. The road was very steep. The rain had let up. Even though he hadn't answered my question, I knew the answer. He was going to kill me. I wouldn't get back home tonight. Not tonight. Or any other night. It was funny. Sometimes used to hate that little apartment of mine where nothing ever happened. But tonight... And then, for some strange reason, I thought about Ruth. What would she say tomorrow when I didn't show up at work? I... I wondered where they'd find my body. Well, here we are. Look out, Mountain. Top of the world. We came over the crest of the hill. 
way down below, sit stretched out for miles, millions of lights glittering in the rain. For a moment, I forgot everything. It was the most beautiful sight I'd ever seen. Ever been up here before? No. Nice, isn't it? Yes. I used to come up here with a girl once. We used to sit and talk for hours. Come on. We'll get a better view if we get out. I knew it was foolish to argue with him, so I followed him. But as he walked over towards the edge, I became frightened. It was such a steep drop. Well, come on. I'm afraid to get so close to the edge. You won't fall. Look, that's Los Angeles over there. That bright line of lights is Western Avenue. I went to school somewhere along in there. I used to get in all sorts of trouble at school. But I got by. I managed. Everyone said I'd grow out of it. But, oh, well, over that way is towards the ocean. That's Westwood. That's where she lived. This girl I was telling you about. That was the best part of my life, I guess. That's when they said marriage and a wife would straighten me out. Marriage and a wife would straighten me out in Westwood, they said. <laughs> does, does your wife still live there? No. She's dead. Oh, I'm sorry. You needn't be. I killed her. Did, did you kill her tonight? No. A long time ago. The jury said I was insane. But I think it was the sanest thing I ever did. They put me in an asylum. But you know what it's like being locked up year after year? When you know there's nothing wrong with you? No. No, I don't. It isn't good. You do anything to get out. Anything. Anything at all. I knew. I knew if I could keep him talking, maybe a car would come along. Maybe something would happen. It was my only chance. What are you thinking about? You. You killed someone else tonight, didn't you? Yes. Dr. Morgan? Yes. He was the one of the men who thought I was insane. Why did you do it? I wanted to get his car and get taken away, and I didn't want to be locked up anymore. Oh, but they'll catch you. No, they won't find the doctor for several days. I saw it as that. How can you be so sure? I do things thoroughly. What are you going to do now? First, I'm going to, and then I guess I'll go south. I knew what he meant by that pause. I started to back away, slowly. I'd made a mistake by reminding him in the present. My hands went instinctively to my apron pocket for something to defend myself with. I knew there was a pencil there. It was sharp. Maybe I could scratch him or hurt him in some way with it. But when I reached for it, I felt something else instead. Something cold and hard. I was puzzled for a moment. And then I remembered it was the shaker I'd picked up at the drive-in. Stand still! And then he started moving toward me. Me! With only a pencil and a shaker to defend myself with. Too bad I came into that drive-in tonight. Well, why did you? Because I was hungry. Because I hadn't eaten for a long time. Weren't, weren't you afraid someone would see you? No alarm had gone out. How'd you know? I knew. If only you hadn't rolled down that window. Well, if you're sorry, why don't you let me go? It's too late to. That... Sudden movement. 
His arms were around me in a tight embrace. I started to scream, but suddenly his lips closed over mine. Pushing my head back roughly, he kissed me. I could scarcely breathe, and I, I felt the car's headlights on us like a spotlight. Ah, uh, just look at that view, will ya? I'll have to do this in a picture sometime. Can't you see you're interrupting something? Come on, drive on, will you? Okay, okay. And in all this rain, you think people would have some more sense? Huh. He held me a moment longer. And when the car had gone, he released me. My pencil had fallen to the ground. I was left with only the shaker in my hand. I fingered it nervously, and then I felt the top coming off. I felt the contents spilling in my hand. What have you got in your hand? Nothing. Give it to me. No. Give it to me. No. God, give that to me. <sighs> he grabbed my wrist and pulled me toward him. We were moving to the edge of the cliff. But my other hand was free, and I threw the contents of the shaker into his face. Oh! Oh, my eyes! I flew to his face in an effort to clear his eyes. But I was late. The pepper had blinded him. He lunged out for me, but I stepped aside quickly, and he slipped in the mud. And... Oh! His hands went out to steady himself. He clawed frantically at thin air, and then I saw him uh, falling over uh, backwards, uh, over the edge. Uh, oh, and then my strength gave way, and I felt myself sinking down to the ground. I don't know how long I must have been there. But when I came to, it was raining again. Soaked to the skin. And there was mud caked in my hair. No one felt. The light of Los Angeles stretched out in a pattern, peacefully below. And I knew that somewhere at the foot of those hills was Glendale and my apartment rose slowly to my feet, and I started back toward the road. Somehow, everything that had happened seemed unreal, like a dream. Everything but the way he, he kissed me to keep me from crying out. Suspense. Presented by Roma Wines, R-O-M-A, selected for your pleasure from the world's greatest reserves of fine wines. And now it's curtain call time for tonight's suspense star, Heather Kovach. Heather, you were grand. We hope you enjoyed your part tonight as much as we did your performance. Oh, thank you, Andy. As a matter of fact, playing the part of a waitress tonight was a treat. I just pictured myself knee-deep in juicy steaks. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me, Heather, as a waitress, you deserve a tip. And here's the best tip I know. To make your next dinner party really outstanding, serve Grand Estates California Burgundy or Suture. For Grand Estates Wines, presented by Roma, America's greatest, greatest fitner, are the ultimate in wine excellence. Yes, the brilliance, clarity, full fragrance, and mellow taste of Grand Estates wine pleases the most discriminating guests. Well, I know that my guests would agree with you. And Heather, there's a reason Grand Estates Burgundy and Suture are distinctively better, because for Grand Estates wines, Roma selects only the choicest grapes, then the priceless skill of Roma master vintners, necessary time, and America's fine wine-making resources guide this choice grape treasure to rich taste luxury so remember when you serve grand estates wines you serve the finest the crowning achievement of vintner's skills well that's a real tip andy 
And while you're giving out thanks, let me give a great big portion with love and kisses to my great and good husband, James Kovach, for playing the man so wonderfully. It was really my pleasure. Well, thanks to you both. Tonight's suspense play was written by Mel Delaney and Muri Rory Moulton. And also featured the voice talents of David Griffith, Deborah Griffith, and sound effects by Sean Layden. And I have been your announcer, Andy Canode. And make it a point to listen next Thursday night for our season finale of Stormy Night Stories. <laughs>